ladies and gentlemen, I thought in the last video for 3.14 we'd finish it all in one video, but we didn't. We have one more review activity to look at, the Unit 3 review. So let's open that one up. Number one, the stock market crash triggered the beginning of the Great Depression and the worst economic crisis in U.S. history. What factors contributed to the crash? Okay, A, a false belief that stock prices would continue to rise. Yes, that contributed to it. B, a purchasing of stock on credit by individuals and trusts. Yes, that caused it. Too many ordinary people owning stock. Well, that's really not a cause. Overvalued stock prices. Yes, that was a cause as well. Let's check our answers. Good job. We are all correct. Two, which did not contribute to the Dust Bowl conditions in plain states? Overplanting of wheat. No, that contributed. Stripping of natural grasses, yes, that contributed. Severe drought, yes, that contributed. So the one left clear cutting of the region's forests, that did not contribute because the Great Plains did not have many trees. So let's check. Correct. How do many Plains farmers respond to the challenges they faced during the Dust Bowl conditions? They began to use more productive farming techniques? Not yet. Two, or B, they left California in hopes of starting a new life. Yes, many of those, they were called Okies, left for other jobs and um, new chances in California. They marched on Washington's in hope of federal assistance. I don't remember that happening. And they formed cooperatives to share equipment. No, not at this point. So it was just B. What was one effect of the Great Depression on the lives of ordinary Americans? Thousands of people lived in makeshift shanty towns. B, women ex America experienced increases in marriage and birth rates as fewer women had jobs. No, it was actually decreasing. Fewer people bought televisions. Well, TVs really weren't popular yet. And more people applied for food stamps and welfare. That didn't happen yet, so it's just A. Thousands of people lived in makeshift shanty towns called Hoovervilles. What effect did Herbert Hoover's philosophy of government have on the federal response to the economic crisis? Is it A, his belief in government oversight resulted in vast new regulatory legislation? No. B, his belief in small government led to veto of legislative attempts to address the situation? No. His belief the federal government could not give direct aid to inv individuals left millions without help? Yes. His belief in limited government helped him from seeking any action? Well, he did try some things. So let's just see. What is one reason government intervention proved necessary during the Great Depression? European markets were booming. The United States needed to keep up. No, we know that they were suffering as well. Bank failures and credit problems meant spiraling unemployment, home losses, and business failures. Yes. Voters demanded intervention or business wanted more government regulation. It's mostly B there. That's correct. What themes for government action emerged during FDR's first 100 days as president? The business of America's business. The government should not intervene. No, that wasn't right. Not during FDR's time. Heavy regulation of the banking industry, a laissez-faire approach to other businesses, no. Relief to individuals, economic recovery, reforms to avoid future economic disaster, yes, the three R's. Less emphasis on a market economy and move to a command economy, no, it's still a market economy, so it should be C, and we are correct. Which was not a technique used by FDR to maintain political and public support for New Deal programs. Bi-weekly press conferences for reporters, no, that was a technique. Fireside chats, that was a technique. He built a political coalition including immigrants, women, youth, and African Americans. He did that. He established a citizenry, citizen advisory council to represent people from all walks of life. I don't remember that. So it was D. Which program put young men to work planting trees, fighting fires, and improving parks? I remember that was a Civilian Conservation Corps. Correct. Which legislation passed during the second New Deal became the New Deal's most popular and long-lasting program? That is the Social Security Act. Which is not a historical view of the New Deal? President Roosevelt's personality was the key to the New Deal? Well, that is a view. Reforms would have occurred under any president because the situation was so dire. Yes, that is a, uh, a historical view. The New Deal was a halfway revolution because it was as much as people could handle. Yep, that was a historical view as well. And President, just a minute here, President Roosevelt ended the Great Depression through his successful programs. Well, he didn't end the Depression, so we'll put D. Very good. Which was not an effect of the New Deal programs on American life. Unemployment dropped significantly. 
government power grew, public work projects had a national impact, or the economy rebounds to 1928 levels. Well, that was not in effect, that last one, so we'll check. Correct. Why had the United States returned to isolationism by the 1930s? People felt World War I had been fought for nothing and wanted to avoid a second conflict. Well, that was one reason. Congress wanted to concentrate on economic problems at home. Mm. President Roosevelt was opposed to providing any assistance to Asia or Europe. Not really. People believe the United States should model self-sufficiency for Europe and Asia. No, not that either. So it should just be A. Good work. All the following describe ways that FDR assisted the Allies or prepared for war before entering World War I, except for providing supplies through a cash and carry program. No, he did that. Beginning the Lend-Lease program that exchanged supplies for the use of military bases. No, they did that too. Endorsing legislation that required men to participate in one year of military service. No, they did that. And lastly, offering surveillance services and military intelligence to allow the British to target the Luftwaffe. No, they didn't do that. So it should be D is the only one that they did not assist. What eventually brought the United States into World War II? That is Japan bombing U.S. ships in Pearl Harbor. Which of the following describe ways that Americans participated in the war effort? Check all that apply. They accepted rationing and saved scrap metal. Yes, they did. They commuted further to work despite high gas prices. No, not really. Large numbers of women entered both the civilian workforce and the military. Yes. Many African Americans served in the military and worked in the federal government. Yes. Check. Very good. What was the most serious constitutional question raised by the presence of internment camps in the United States during World War II? Most detainees were U.S. citizens held without charges or the prospect of a speedy hearing, constitutionally being held against their will. That was one reason. Camps provided, prevented detainees, detainees from ex, uh, exercising their right to bear arms. Well, that wasn't really a main argument. Detainees were not allowed to speak freely to one another or practice their religions. That wasn't really a constitutional argument. That was from the internment camps. Or the press was not permitted to report on activities inside the camps. That was not really the serious constitutional question. It looks like it's going to be A. And the United States ended the war by dropping two, the first atomic bombs in August 1945. Where did the United States drop the bombs? That was in Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Who was not a key commander in World War II? MacArthur was in the Pacific Theater, Nemitz was, Dwight Eisenhower was in the European Theater, Robert McNamara, no, not yet. We'll read about him later. Which battle was a turning point in the Allied fight against Japan? So Allied fight against Japan. So D-Day inv invasion at Normandy, that would have been in the European Theater of War. The Battle of Midway, Battle of Britain, Battle of Stalingrad. It was a Battle of Midway there in, uh, for the fight in the Pacific. And that's it. Next. Oh, write the following word down. You'll need to receive credit for completing this activity. So remember, we already had written down from the New Deal activity the word recovery, but now this is the Unit 3 review. So I'm going to write down, this was the Unit 3 review. I'm going to write down the word depression, making sure I spell it right. See, I got my two activities, my two words. And I've completed all the online activities there. I will still read through the chapter 30 highlights. There are several slides of that, so be sure you go through and read all of those. Several slides. And then when you're all done, go to the 314 checkpoint. Oh, yeah, they say I've already taken the exam. Okay, let's try this again. Hold on a moment. Okay, so I'm at the 314 checkpoint. And it says, enter the word you received when you completed the Unit 3 review activity. Oh, so I have two words. One's the New Deal, the New Deal activity, and the other is the Unit 3 review. So I should put in the word depression, not the recovery one. So it's a good thing I did all the activities and copied down the names of the activity and the word I received so I know I will get the right word from the right activity for the checkpoint. So be sure to do that. And when you are done, you will complete the Unit 3 Part 1 test. Be sure to go through your reading guides from all the lessons, um, any notes that you've taken, uh, look at the old quizzes and checkpoints, go through the other activities in Lesson 314. If you were 
didn't do well on some of those review activities, you might want to go through them again, go through the flashcards, you know, all those things to feel very prepared before you take the Unit 3 test. So good luck, and I hope you do very well.